Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for July 1, 2022, the Banish TikTok edition. We begin with that story from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, FCC uh, member Brendan Carr has asked Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores, citing security concerns posed by the data collected by the short-form video site on American users. He believes that TikTok poses an unacceptable national security risk and it has failed to uh, divest itself uh, of its Chinese ownership. Next up, also from the Wall Street Journal, Risk and Compliance Journal, Mingi Sun reporting, the UK has sanctioned sanctions regulator find a UAE-based subsidiary of a UK company for violating, san- violating sanctions on Syria. The Office of Financial Sanctions Implementation said it imposed a penalty of £15,000 against Tracerdor, a provider of oil and gas measuring products and services that a a subsidiary of a London specialty chemical company's Johnson Matthey. The company made two payments to sanctions Syrian entities for an employee to fly home. The regulator said the company booked the flights to the UAE travel agency and then paid the travel agency. Uh, Next up, um, in just a uh, pathetic decision by the U.S. Supreme Court, they not only gutted the Environmental Protection Agency, but they gutted the Clean Air Act, saying that uh, the EPA does not have authority to limit carbon dioxide from power plants. It is uh, clearly part of the MAGBA hat-wearing majority's attempt to gut... um, modern law in the United States. And our final story comes to us from Bloomberg, where the Department of Justice is uh, investigating the New York City Police Department division that probes sex crimes for the way it handles incidents, including reports of gender bias and the shaming of victims. The federal government is investing allegations of failing to conduct basic investigative steps and instead shaming and abusing survivors and indeed re-traumatizing them through the interview process. The, uh, based on the information from the DOJ, uh, we find significant justification to in- investigate this division, said Attorney General Lisa, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco in a statement. The probe comes less than two months after the NYPD commissioner named Carlos Ortiz, a 25-year veteran of the force to head the unit, The NYPD said it welcomed the review and is committed to improving the quality of its investigations. Uh, This is certainly an exceptional probe for the Department of Justice to engage in. We'll have to report on it later. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.